Hey everyone, Nick Russo here. The first video in this series describes the core logic of a hangman solver written in Lua. For those not familiar with hangman, it's like Wheel of Fortune. The user must guess a letter given only the length of a mystery word. If the letter is present, it is revealed everywhere in which it exists. If the letter is absent, it is recorded as a failed guess and users are permitted up to five failed guesses before they lose. Before diving into the code, we need some kind of text-based word list. I downloaded a file from GitHub that contains more than 460,000 English words, one per line. I'll provide a link to this file in the video description, but you can use any word list that you choose. Our script will consult this giant file using string-based pattern matching later on. One final comment, I am aware that most of my subscribers are proficient in Python programming. Therefore, I will explain Lua by comparing it to Python using callouts on the screen. Okay, let's start reviewing the code in the hangman standalone.lua file. First, any line beginning with two hyphens is a comment comparable to the pound sign in Python. The first line of executable code declares a local variable named echo, which is assigned to the function io.write. io.write is responsible for printing output to the terminal and is built into Lua. This assignment allows us to call echo instead of io.write, which will be useful in future videos. When we ultimately integrate this script with our client gaming application, the app uses echo to display output to the game screen. It makes sense to develop our script using echo, then delete this line during integration rather than having to replace every instance of io.write with echo in the future. I hope it's clear that Lua, like Python, is dynamically typed. We didn't have to explicitly tell Lua that echo would be assigned to a function reference. Next, we consume two command line arguments. In terms of collections, Lua only supports tables, which are key value mappings comparable to Python dictionaries. There is no such thing as a list, set, or tuple. Command line arguments are stored in the arg table and the keys are positive integers starting at one. Arg sub one maps to the first command line argument and arg sub two maps to the second. We'll discuss the relevance of these variables soon. I've declared a few constants towards the top of the script rather than hard coding these fields deeper within it. The per line value indicates how many possible matches should be displayed on each line for readability. The file name value is the fully qualified path to the word list I mentioned earlier. If you decide to test this code, you must change this path based on your system setup. As a general comment, it's important to normalize your data, especially if your script consumes input in multiple formats. We can reasonably expect the word and process to be supplied in a standard format consisting only of lowercase letters and underscores, whereby underscores represent mystery letters. However, let's assume that the wrong letters value may contain individual characters either separated by spaces or concatenated together into one giant string. We can replace all instances of the space character with the empty string using the string.gsub function which performs global substitution. This is comparable to string.replace in Python returning a new string after the substitution is complete. Now the wrong letters value is guaranteed to be one concatenated string of wrong guesses with no space characters. Let's discuss iteration and conditional logic next. We need to pick apart the word and process to determine which letters have been guessed correctly. After all, a correctly guessed letter cannot be guessed a second time, and any mystery letters within the word and process cannot mask an already guessed letter. We'll initialize a string to contain the right letters, beginning with the empty string. Then we'll use a for loop starting at index one and iterating until the length of the word in process. Prepending a pound sign to a string returns its length, comparable to the len function in Python. Note that Lua begins counting from one until length, whereas Python begins counting from zero until length minus one. 
Within the loop, we'll use string.sub, which is short for substring, to extract each character. The two integer inputs specify the starting and ending indices of the substring to return, and when these variables are equal, string.sub returns a single character. In Python, we would simply use word and process sub i instead to extract individual letters. We only want to add this character when two conditions are true. If the character is not an underscore and the letter is not already in the right letter's string, then we will append that character to the end of the right letter string. String.find will return the first index where a given character is found, or nil if it is not found. Lua's nil is comparable to Python's none and is treated as false when evaluated in a Boolean expression. The double dot syntax performs string concatenation comparable to the plus sign in Python, allowing us to iteratively craft a custom string. In Python, this entire logic could be collapsed into a set conversion, then removing the underscore at the end. While Lua is simple, it doesn't have all of the cool techniques that Python does. At this point, we have our collection of wrong letters and right letters. We now define a replacement value for each underscore in the word and process. For example, if A and B are in the word, but C and D are not, then the remaining underscores can never be A, B, C, or D because those letters were already guessed. This pattern defines a character set containing the right and wrong letters preceded by a caret and encased in square brackets. This tells the matching logic not to match any characters in this set. This replacer is a temporary variable to improve readability in constructing the final matching pattern. Recall that the file of words contains one word per line. Our pattern will match the beginning of the line with the caret, not to be confused with the caret inside of the character set, and we can match the end of the line with the dollar sign. These anchors prevent multi-line string matches in the words file. In between these anchors, we'll use string.gsub again to replace every underscore with the blank replacer. Remember, A and B are present, while C and D are absent, so the blank replacer would be caret ABCD in square brackets, substituted in for every instance of the underscore. So far, we've simply prepared some variables to make our future logic easier. It's smart to ensure that our preparation was correct. Using the echo function, which is just a reference to io.write, let's display those values. This intermediate verification technique is a great way to prevent confusing bugs later. In a future video, we'll comment these lines out. As is true in many programming languages, the backslash n character represents a new line. We are finally ready to read in all the words from the file. This is the most memory intensive part of the script, and it makes sense to defer this step until all of the helper strings have been successfully created. Using io.open, which is syntactically similar to Python's open function, we specify the file name and a lowercase r to indicate read access. io.open returns a handle to the file, and notice that we perform the file opening, the error checking, and the assignment in one line. Like Python assert, the Lua assert will ensure the input value evaluates to true. Unlike Python assert, the Lua assert will return that value for subsequent assignment. Lua offers some shorthand when calling functions, which I demonstrate here. First, read all of the data from the handle, which is a reference to the open file. Recall that there is only one word per line, so this giant string will be separated by new line characters. Using the string.match function, we can match contiguous blocks of non-whitespace characters and return an iterator for future use. In Lua, an iterator is technically a function which returns the next element each time the function is called. This is comparable to a Python iterator, although the implementation details differ significantly. Inside the loop, we'll test for matches. If a candidate word matches the pattern, 
the first index will be a non-nil value. Let's also ensure the length of the word in process is exactly equal to the candidate word. For example, if the solution is the word passing, we don't want the solver to suggest the word trespassing because that's too long. Our original G sub match should already ensure the lengths are the same because there is only one word per line, but it doesn't hurt to be extra careful. When a match occurs, simply print the word to the screen and increment a counter. The counter is relevant because of the per line constant from earlier, which was set to 12. We'll use the modulus operator to print a new line every 12 words and use a comma plus space in between words on the same line. I've collapsed the logic of the if statement into a single line for brevity, which is useful for simple operations. For cleanliness, I'm printing two new lines at the end of the script to create some space. This makes it look better in the game. To run the script, we use the Lua command, just like Python. Specify the name of the script, followed by the word in process, and the incorrectly guessed letters. I'll follow my verbal example from earlier using A, B, C, and D. The first five lines of output represent our debugging statements to print all the relevant strings within the solution. Focus on the pattern. It resembles the word in process, except the underscores are replaced by our negative character set and is anchored appropriately. Again, these debugging statements will be commented out in the final solution, and the player will be left with a collection of suggestions. Based on these suggestions, the player can continue to guess additional letters. To test that, I'll change the user inputs to indicate that we have made two new guesses. The letter E is present at the end of the word, while the letter F is absent. As you continue to play the game, the list of suggestions will shrink in size. In the next video, we'll integrate this code into our client application known as Mudlet using aliases and functions. See you there.